Hi guys, Brown here and welcome to part 29 of my F1 2019 career mode here today for the French Grand Prix. If you missed the last episode in Canada, be sure to check that out before you see this one. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into qualifying then for here in France. And France, a decent track for me, I think we did alright last year in France, I can't remember really what happened, I remember it was wet but apart from that I can't really remember what happened in the race um, but into the first couple of corners and this is actually the first time I've done France since um, Codemasters did the update to change the pit lane to the newest version so it was like driving a completely different track at that point every time I wanted to pit so as we get we skip onto the end of our first flying lap and we go P3 but I made a lot of mistakes so we're going to carry on and skip onto the end of that lap and you can see we've improved in every sector and when we come up to the line we're going to improve one position up to P4 as we skip on now to the end of the session we're all, all the way back down in P17 and this has got to be a good lap but we've gone green in each, each sector again you can see there as we come to the line again and we are comfortably through and into Q2 we're in 7th so quite a way off of 15th and there you can see who has been knocked out of Q1 Grosjean was on the bubble but he gets through and now we are into Q2 where this is on one of my first runs and I make a massive mistake just, just try to turn into the corner a bit too early and plus I break, broke a little bit later as well so that didn't really help and I was actually trying to get through on the medium tyre you can see here somebody tried in Spain and we went on to win that race so I thought why not try it again but as we skip on to the end of the session we're going to have to go onto the soft but look at that look where you can see where the line is it's just above that bridge and look where we are when when the session ends we're inches from the line but we're going to be starting all the way down in 15th so let's get into this french grand prix it's going to be a comeback drive yet again before Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel and a commanding victory from Lewis Hamilton gave us a brilliant race last year. What, I wonder, will it have in store for us this season? Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, 6 left and 9 right, for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane Nor and watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. Let's talk about Brown. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast, so they'll be disappointed, won't they? It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the start lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Antonio Giovinazzi will lead us away from pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Leclerc, Lando Norris and Bottas, Weber, Vettel, Magnussen and Nico Hülkenberg, Perez, Russell, Roman Grosjean and Stroll. Brown, Butler, Alexander Albon and Daniel Ricciardo. Kubica and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So Jeevan actually getting his first pole for Mercedes also along with our back qualifying. Gasly's all the way down in P20. He didn't actually set a lap in qualifying. So this weekend goes from bad to worse for Red Bull and me and Gazi are both going to have to do a comeback drive. We're going to do the one stop from the medium one to the hards. And let's get into the start of this French Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. It's Giovinazzi v 
Verstappen, I think it was, off the line. And Lewis getting involved there a little bit. You can see us in the background. We're just kind of threading the needle, trying to get through down the inside there. And out, trying to go up the inside of a Williams. And now of a McLaren of Lando Norris, I think that is. Down the inside we go. We can not quite pass them yet. We're going to have to go to the outside. It's actually Hulkenberg. And we go down the inside of Hulkenberg and do get past. Up ahead of us though is Kevin Magnussen and you see Mercedes and a Ferrari were battling there. I we just saw that for a brief second as we head down there first. What is the DR restraint? We're going to be defending from the McLaren and they're free up wide there up front. Um, but Hulkenberg not trying to do anything, anything too risky and does back out of it there. But he may have another go here. You can see the launch that Max Verstappen has got. And Leclerc side by side of Giovinazzi. Hamilton is just waiting in the wings to anything that goes wrong. But it is Leclerc who comes out on top. And it is a Ferrari 1-2. So Giovinazzi going backwards at the start. As we go for the lunge down the inside of Kevin Magnussen. We're side by side of Magnussen. We go now going to be on the outside that will then turn back to the inside but we made a mistake and we couldn't quite get past Magnussen that little mistake cost us we nearly lost out to Hulkenberg again but we're going to have to sit back behind the Haas so I've actually lost quite a bit of time there you can see we have to think about it defensively on the McLaren before we can start to think about going forward as Hulkenberg here tries Literally a couple of corners later, down our inside, he couldn't pull it off. So we just about to stay ahead, and now hopefully we can try and focus on those in front of us rather than the McLaren behind. But that might last. That won't last too long, as you can see here. Here comes Hulkenberg, goes for it again down our inside, and we're gonna have to. It's going to be tricky defending this. He's fully alongside of Debris going off someone's front wing there. We push Hulkenberg wide. And up front is all kicking off. Weber's getting in there with the two Alphas. The, both of the Mercedes and Leclerc and the McLaren are all going together as well. It's all kicking off here in France. They go around the quick fire corners of I think it's called Le Mose or something like that. Don't quote me on that. As this is Hamilton and Leclerc going wheel to wheel. And Leclerc is just going to come out on top of the Brit. Of course, a couple of days ago, he became the six-time champ in this series. He is already a six-time champ as we go for the lunge down the inside of Kevin Magnussen. And now we're on the outside of Magnussen and back down the inside of Magnussen. And we are past the Dane in his house. And we can now get our head down and and chase after our Toro Rosso replacement of Lucas Weber and hopefully we can disperse of him fairly quickly as we think about the lunge down the inside couldn't quite do anything there now we're going to have to wait as we go through the chicane and now onto the second straight whatever you can't get done on the first straight you can pretty much get it done on the second so as we go to the inside down the inside we force about into the flat corner but he was just that little bit too far ahead and we do go massively wide there and we've, and we've hit we made contact with Magnussen and Magnus has re-overtaken us now we might even lose out to Hulkenberg but we don't, but we have lost out to Magnussen. So this is the replay of what happened. You can see we go wide, Magnussen just puts his car there, then we get the oversteer, and we lose out to Magnussen. And we're now going to re-overtake him, and then try and get past Weber, or not, because as Magnussen goes for it on Weber, we're going to go round the outside of both of them, and get both of them. Magnussen gets Weber. And Weber has effectively been double teamed there. We've gone slightly wide on the exit. Weber's going to try and re overtake Magnussen. He fought about back down the inside of his Magnussen. But this time we are ahead of him as the first round of stops kicks off. The leaders coming into the pits, making their stop onto the mediums. Both Leclerc and Giovinazzi. 
as they are on the two stop because of course they would have started on the um the soft and they're in so much traffic here you can see and that's really where the race kind of fell apart as there is Albon I believe it is going wheel to wheel with Robert Kubica see Perez and Ricardo going wheel to wheel up ahead and now it's all kicking off here down the inside goes a racing point on on Kubica couldn't quite get the job done you can see two Ferraris also in the background both Mercs as well as we skip on quite a few laps and into the pits we come to make our one and only stop we're going to go on to the hards and let's see where we come out so as we come out the pits we've been beaten out by Lando Norris but we've beaten out those who were battling Hulkenberg and actually Gasly getting past Hulkenberg at some point as this is us on the back of Lando Norris we're going to go sailing around his outside at turn one he's going to defend well though and we're going to have to he's going to turn to the inside at turn two and we do get that move done as skipping on quite a few more laps the leaders come in to make their second stop and it was a very kind of realistic race in terms of strategy so we so we had Giovinazzi and Leclerc doing the two stop and then Hamilton and Vettel Hamilton and Verstappen sorry doing the doing the one stop so they went on to the hards as these are the both alphas battling it's Bottas v Vettel and the wheel to wheel and this is actually I know you can see the Ferrari ahead but this is actually for the net race lead between both of the alphas because they've both done the one stop so we are effectively after these stops in a net P3 and compared to where we started it's amazing as I think Vettel has just about stayed ahead of his team and then no he hasn't and he's come wide down the side it's actually Vettel who retains that lead from Valtteri Bottas and you can see here these two are battling so much that we're even catching them so we kind of licking our lips here and could be in for something because Bottas tries to go to the outside that turns to the inside and the side by side and the more they battle the quicker we can catch and possibly get them both but we'll have to wait and see this is a lap later Bottas then re-overtaking and just about this is Vettel trying to re-overtake his teammate and Vettel gets the job done on Valtteri and look how close we are now we are within touching this distance as down the inside goes Bottas this is literally every single possible overtaking point they are going at it as you can see here we are in kind of slipstream zone on the back of Vettel and we couldn't quite get the job done but Vettel has got past Bottas and now we're in for a real shout in this race as we skip on a couple of laps and we are right on the back of Bottas we're gonna fade to the left go to the right and now go sailing around Bottas is outside he locks up which kind of worried me when I saw that in like real time but we get the job done on Bottas and that is P2 and now here we come on Sebastian Vettel we're gonna try going to his outside he clips the curb and that, oh, that unsettles the car and we are now in the lead of this French Grand Prix but for how long because here comes the Alphas they're free abreast they've made it free abreast going into the flat right hander this isn't going to end well Vettel goes off the track and we just about maintain this lead as out of the race goes Lance Stroll but we don't really care about that the crowd actually were clapping in which I thought quite funny but we want to go back onto this battle between the two alphas as we started to pull away but they're still going at it Vettel on the inside Bottas on the outside and Vettel just about stays ahead he pushes his teammate wide boy if we saw, saw racing like this in real life hopefully 2021 will do that but here they come again this is Bottas just blitzing his teammate down the straight so we skip on in a couple of laps and this is Bottas re over this is Vettel sorry re overtaking Bottas so confusing when it's two of the same car 
the two teammates going wheel to wheel as Vettel looks to have got the job done but Bottas is not done there as back down the inside Bottas goes and past his teammate yet again this is actually on the, the, one of the final laps of the Grand Prix so as we skip on then we round the final corner and we are going to win in France from 15th to 1st it's back to back wins it's our third of the season and ever since Monaco we have been unstoppable it was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today what do you think it was Ant that gave them the edge over the competition today I think the key here is just the quality of the race cars you know I mean how many overtakes did they make overall I'm sure we have a stat person keeping score somewhere and it's fantastic to watch isn't it this is a strategic sport at the end of the day, but it's always really gratifying to see close walk battles on track. It's what all the fans are after. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. So that has been your French Grand Prix, a bit more interesting than last season. We've won it, which is always a bonus. But our second, Vettel third. In terms of the driver's standards, we're 14 points behind Hamilton. And I think we can definitely say we are definite title contenders this season. In terms of the constructors, it's very, very tight. Obviously, Ferrari is storming away. They've got a 34 point gap over Merck, but then there's literally three points between them and then two points more back to us in fourth in the constructors. So it's all to play for. And of course, we now have to renegotiate our contract, which remember back to back, it didn't go down so well. We're still on the original con contract and now we're going to try and hopefully redeem ourselves. But you'll see in just a second, we use the first one. They don't like it. We do the second one in just a second. You can see they don't like it again. So we only have one more left to do, and they're not going to like it again. I'm afraid negotiations have broken down, and there's nothing more I can do. Luckily, we had the team's original offer to fall back on, so we've agreed to those terms. We'll have another chance to negotiate down the road. I just want to show you how close I was to actually getting this contract through. You can see that it's literally a pixel and that's it that's enough to say now nah, well done you want some you want it you need to win every race otherwise we get really annoyed basically what Red Bull are saying so we're going to do two, we're actually going to do three upgrades because I didn't mention in that race we actually had a really warm MGUK so I'm going to do the reliability side on that and do upgrades on the aero and the chassis side we're going to replace that part and that is pretty much rounding off what's been a fairly decent episode to be honest obviously it didn't start out great in qualifying but what a strategy by red bull and just what a race i think the pace was there obviously to be sure because we won it but i don't know maybe if alpha weren't battling as much as they were maybe we wouldn't have won it but it's a, a win's a win, so it's always a bonus as we head into Austria in the next race. See what we can do there. Can we make a three on the bounce? That'd be amazing and get our fourth win of the season. But the way we're going at the minute, we're absolutely unstoppable. But until that next episode, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until Austria, goodbye.